LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before. Because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode of Winfluence. Social media algorithms are changing all the time. For me, it's all about engagement. It's about how my influencer portray themselves and connect with their audience. It's not about the number. It's not about the popularity contest. I think that was a few years ago. Now it changed. It's more about the quality and how the influencer connects with their audience. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. The primary reason I like to interview people about this wild, wonderful world we work in is that I don't know everything. Even though we talk about a lot of the topics I consider myself fairly well schooled or experienced with, someone else always brings a different perspective to the table. It's the accumulation of those different perspectives that I feel makes me, and I suppose you, smarter. We're better off at our jobs because we listen to someone else's perspective, even if it's about something we feel comfortable that we know well. I had the great pleasure of being a guest on Laura Schmoisman's podcast, Coffee Number 5, a few months ago. I didn't know Laura before we did the interview, but as I prepared and then chatted with her, I realized here's someone with a world of different perspectives I need to know more from. Laura is a luxury marketing specialist, which is a category I definitely want to know more about. She's also a global marketing expert. She works with clients around the world and can bring the experiences of working in different countries, cultures, and languages to the table, too. Laura is based in Los Angeles, but she's originally from Argentina. Her take on marketing and branding has created a nice following for her in the industry, not just on her podcast, but through her work at her agency, The Darl. I invited Laura to come on the show today to talk to us about all of those things and give us a little different perspective. You probably know by now I recorded the interview with Laura the way I always do, using Zencaster. They are a sponsor of Winfluence and one that I have used for quality audio recording over the internet for years now. Zencaster bills itself as an all-in-one podcast production suite that gives you studio quality audio and video without needing all the technical know-how, and that is accurate. I love Zencaster because it records each guest locally. The audio or video file is saved to their computer. Zencaster then uploads the crystal clear audio and video right into a cloud folder and the Zencaster suite so you have high quality raw materials to work with. Your recording is awesome because it's on your machine. Well, theirs is too because it's saved on their machine with local settings, then uploaded so you can go get it. Stop recording one track in Zoom and other softwares. Do it the professional way, like we do here on Winfluence. As a member of the Winfluence community, you get 30% off a pro account. There's also a free trial so you can test before you commit. Just go to zen.ai slash Winfluence. That's Z-E-N dot A-I slash Winfluence. Take your podcast recordings, video, and audio to the next level. Sound good, just like me and our guests. Zen.ai slash Winfluence. And I know you're wondering how I keep all my work organized for this podcast and all the influence marketing strategies I work on for clients out there. Well, that answer is easy. Basecamp. They also sponsor Winfluence to make it easier for me to bring you these shows each week. I've been using Basecamp for project management and team communications for about as long as it's been around, which is 18 years 
Basecamp is all about simplicity. It's designed to give you and your team the tools you need to get work done. Messages, to-dos, file storage, chat, calendar, and more. Bring all-in-one project management to your business. There is a 30-day free trial, and you do not need a credit card to try it. So there's literally nothing holding you back. Go to jason.online slash Basecamp. That's jason.online slash Basecamp and use the project management software they literally write about in books. It's really, really good. Seriously. Folks, it's time for a little perspective. Luxury marketing specialist and world traveling thinker Laura Schmoisman is next on Winfluence. Laura, we had a lot of fun on your podcast, Coffee Number 5, not long ago, talking about influencer marketing, but I did all the talking, so I knew I had to have you on Winfluence to share your perspective with the folks here. First of all, let's tell folks about your podcast. We had a great talk, and I also saw not long ago, you had Martin Lindstrom on your show, fascinating guy, talks a lot about consumer psychology and such. I love his stuff, but tell folks what they can expect out of the interviews and such on Coffee Number 5 in case they want to jump over and subscribe. Well, I'm all about emerging brands and helping brands grow. I come from working in big agencies and I realized that my passion was in working with small, the smaller guys and help them thrive and grow and evolve. And so that's what I try with my podcast to get people to come in and to talk and give us keys and clues and inspirations of stories that if they happen to them, could happen to you too, you know? Very good. Well, it's a very good show for everyone. So jump over and search for Coffee Number 5 wherever you listen to podcasts. Wait till you get done here. We want you to listen to the whole show first, but definitely go over and subscribe. Laura, I think you're you're based in L.A., I believe, but let's go back a ways and start from the beginning. I think you're from Argentina, right? How did you find your way to the States and how did you find your way into marketing? I am. You didn't recognize the sexy accent. That's where it's from. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'm from Argentina, but I've been in the States half of my life already. So even though I'm a Jewish Latina, which is an odd combination, born and raised Jewish in a Latin country. So I know people feel sorry for my kids already, but it is what it is. (laughs) Well, you definitely bring a lot of angles of diversity to the conversation, which is good. And a lot of guilt. (laughs) <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, influence, if one thing we're not is a therapy show, so I think we're going to move past that and, <laughs> and go in talking a little bit more about what I know, or at least what I can I can ask about. So your agency is called the Darl. I know you and your team do really great work there. I think one of the areas of specialization you have is luxury marketing. Now, I want to learn more about that segment. So What are the two or three biggest differences between marketing a luxury brand and marketing the stuff for the rest of us? Well, my background is I'm always somehow was connected with the entertainment industry. My background is when I came to the States, I was working in red carpet a lot. And, you know, red carpet, fashion industry, it's always related. And when I started getting involved in digital marketing, I always was really passionate about fashion industry, which led me to become a professor, a lecturer at Cal Poly Pomona for digital marketing for the fashion and slash beauty industries. So it makes sense that when I was working on my agency, that's what I feel connected with. And that's what I understand. I mean, if you go back, I think fashion industry is one of the was disrupted the most by the digital world. I mean, I don't know if our audience here are familiar with the fashion industry, but the fact that the fashion industry had to change their seasons and how they, they did things just because of the digital world. It's crazy. So I always was fascinated by that and how how you portray that. And it's very different because it's a luxury. It's not something that you can sell to people with that because they need it. Nobody needs really fashion. <laughs> Nobody needs beauty product. I mean, you can get away with buying a cream in CVS, but there is a difference in the products, but also we need to explain why why is luxury, why you want it. And we need to learn how to sell it as well. Well, I definitely think that the people who know me out there in listening land will agree that when you look at me, you definitely know that we don't need fashion because I don't have any. You do have your own style. <laughs> I, okay, I'll take that. I've got a little bit of style, but fashion is definitely not something that's in my purview. So is the difference then really sort of 
taking a product or an idea and either explaining and educating the audience more about it? Or is it really about just sort of pointing to it as something that's aspirational that they need to have because it changes the way the world perceives them? What are the nuances of that? I think they are both, but I'm always, in my agency at least, I believe in education. I think that we need to inform we need to entertain. We need to make things that they are memorable. We need, and that's why it's really important for a luxury brand to create that brand awareness so people get to recognize the brands. Because those brands that they are emerging brands, at the end of the day, what they want is to be placed, that they've been picked up by Macy's and Nordstrom. And none of those uh, stores will pick them up if they don't have brand awareness. So we, it's a little bit of both. It's about creating the need and explaining why this product is better than others, but also create that aspiration of, well, if you wear this brand, or you're going to feel better about yourself, or it's going to ma- have these products that make you look better, or it's anti-aging. There is a reasoning because of the cost of the product. So when a brand is, is looking for connecting with that luxury consumer out there, and they're looking in the digital space to social networks or even perhaps looking at social media influencers for a luxury audience, are there niche places they wind up looking that the rest of us don't know about? Or is your best chance to reach consumers still going to be Instagram, TikTok, and the, you know, the main players? The audience is everywhere. I mean, you you need to identify where your audience is. And I mean, you are the experts on this, but we need to talk their native language of the platform in whatever we are and connect them with our audience. And maybe it's a different, slightly different audience that we're going to have in Facebook and Instagram, in TikTok. But at the end of the day, they're buying the same product. So it's the same brand and we need to create the same narrative, but twist it a little bit and tweak it so it fits the the platform and the native language of the platform. Very nice. All right, let's talk about choosing influencers and creator partners for luxury brands for a second. I'm curious, and, and I've done this a little bit. I don't deal a whole lot with luxury brands, although I have dealt with some premium whiskeys and things like that that you could argue fit in that category. So when, when we're looking at influencers for luxury brands, is it as simple as kind of spot checking the content, looking for creators that post more of that aspirational content with the latest fashions and the chic locations? Or is there something more specific you look for in the data around influencers that tells you that they might be a good partner for a luxury brand? For me right now, you know, social media algorithms are changing all the time. And for me, it's all about engagement. It's about how my influencer portray themselves and connect with their audience. It's not about the number. It's not about the popularity contest. I think that that was in a few years ago. Now it changed. It's more about the quality and how the influencer connects with their audience. And to have an influencer that is responsive and is just not creating great content, is creating content tailored for the brand and their audience. Yeah, excellent. I can't I can't agree more with that for sure. I have said recently, even if an influencer has a really good engagement rate, but they themselves aren't part of it, they're not responding themselves to drive that engagement rate. I have questions as to whether or not they're the type of influencer I want to work with because I want someone who really does have a truer connection with their audience because that means they're going to be able to persuade their audience to do things better than someone who maybe isn't. Absolutely. As creators, they need to create a content that you know that they're going to resonate with their audience and know that I prefer smaller audience, but that the content creator is connected and say, oh, this person is leaving all these comments or they have this point of view because we learn from our audience. So I want creators that actually are learning, educating and using that data. Absolutely. We're talking to Laura Schmoisman from the Darl. She's the host of Coffee Number no. 5, a great podcast you should go subscribe to. When we come back on the show, I want to go global and talk to Laura about marketing beyond the U.S. or the United Kingdom, where most of you are. If you are or are planning to expand globally, it's not as simple as you might think. We're going to find out why after the break. Stay tuned. Back on Winfluence with Laura Schmoisman, who originally hails from Argentina. Laura, how would you describe your home country to people who've never been? I'm curious what it's like there. Oh, my God. It's such a fun country to be in. Uh, If you like meat, you're a meat eater. 
you should go. If you like fashion, <laughs> you should go. Uh, you can have, I mean, I always say that it's a European city in South America. That's how I can describe it. It's a lot of fun. It has a great nightlife and great food again. Uh, very nice. There, and as I understand it from just, you know, my paying attention to history and whatnot, there's a lot of European influence in Argentina. A lot of Europeans, as they either got older and they, you know, wanted to kind of move around the world, find a better climate, whatnot. Argentina, for whatever reason, back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s was a location that people went. So it's not just people from South America there. It's also kind of a, a very worldly country. Am I, am I wrong on that? No, actually, my family immigrated from Russia to Argentina at the end of the 1800s. Nice. I'm fourth generation, but like I was, my family was escaping the war from Russia. There are people coming from a lot from Italy. There are a lot of Armenians, a lot of Spanish people. And I love that mix of cultures. Actually, Argentinian slang is almost pure Italian. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. That's good to yeah. know. Well, I, I'm, I'm actually getting ready to take my first trip. I'm sorry that I'm almost 50 and haven't done this before, but I'm getting ready to take my first trip to South America. I'll be heading to Bogota, Colombia, the second week of September. I know it's not Argentina, but I'm very excited to see a new country and a new continent. I'm really curious about marketing and influencer marketing there. From your experience working internationally, are influencers just as big of a deal in other countries as they are in the U.S.? It is, but it's very different how they use platforms. Like, for example, in South America, Facebook, they doesn't exist. And something that for us is so common, they use the internet in different ways. Also, in many countries in Latin America, they only start buying online heavily because of the pandemic, and they weren't ready for that. So right now the process accelerate, but they have a lot, each country has a different way that they communicate. Like they have their own slang and their own sayings is the same how they use the internet and how they work with the influencers. Interesting. Let's pull back from influencers just a bit and talk about marketing on a global scale altogether. What are the nuances that brands and agencies need to look out for when they're breaking into some of these international markets? Now, I, I know from my own experience, it's a big mistake to assume that Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, or even Japan, Malaysia, Germany, Norway, I know you can't assume everything there functions just like it does in the U.S. or Great Britain. So help us guide through the what to watch for. So what are the big things that people need to look out for? Even in the U.S. and the U.K., there are different things. Like, for example, if I'm doing an email campaign, I wouldn't use the same words or the same trigger words. Email For luxury brands, email campaigns is a huge thing and email marketing. I truly believe that and it works. Social media is fantastic, but the conversion is going to come from email marketing and creating that brand awareness. But you need to talk to your audience and people don't talk the same in the US than in the UK. I always say that you need to understand what a culture laugh about to understand the culture, how they connect. I mean, even if you have a target audience of women that are 45 and 18, I need to talk to them differently. You cannot talk to the, the same happens in a country. So even if you use even the same graphics, you cannot use the same wording maybe. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and for those of you out there who haven't had the good fortune to work beyond your country's borders just yet, the first thing I think you need to know is translation is just the tip of the iceberg. It, it's way more than just a language barrier, right? Absolutely. It's again, it's about when I moved here to the States, I honestly didn't understand what people were laughing about because I was translating it and I didn't find it funny. Like Seinfeld for me wasn't funny <laughs> until I understood <laughs> the culture. That's a great point. That is an absolute. Well, and of course, there's the legendary, you know, sort of marketing story or advertising story. When the marketing slogan for Coca-Cola was originally presented in advertising campaigns in China, the translation was something the wax tadpole. The translation was just lost on people. So it's way more than that. It's really about immersing yourself in the culture and understanding. So on that note, do you think for a U.S. or maybe a British-based agency who's trying to help a brand expand to another country, is it better for them to find a consultant who can help them close that cultural gap? Or do you think they might need to go bigger and find a partner in market or in country to ease that learning curve? Depends of your budget. D depends of so many factors. Also depends what you're doing. Like, for example, I have clients that 
now with marketplaces, which is huge. I have clients that I manage their accounts for Mexico, for UK, other countries in Europe and Canada. And because Amazon goes everywhere, but you need to create a store for different countries in different ways and creating campaigns that they support that in social media, email marketing. So is it better that one agent in essence or multiple? I don't have the answer for that. It's like how it depends on your budget, how you feel comfortable with, and what are you trying to achieve? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend anybody go it alone. You got to have something, I don't, whether it's a consultant or whether it's an agency. Obviously, as Laura pointed out. Well, it's a, at least with, if you're going to work with someone, a lot of people at different places, I will suggest that you have like a core consultant or a core agency that is overseeing the whole brand. I will take it as, you know, a licensing deal that you can, when you have Starbucks here and you have Starbucks in Argentina, it still looks the same. Very true. Fascinating stuff. Well, Laura, I think everyone can tell why you and the Darl are so good for your clients. We certainly appreciate the wisdom today. Before we go, tell everyone where they can find you and the firm on the interwebs. Okay. They can find me at the Darl.com, the Darl agency everywhere else. And also you can look look me up, Lara Schmoisman that com and Lara Schmoisman everywhere. And good luck spelling out my last name. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just like it looks, I think. It's not that hard, I don't think. But Okay, you can try it. We'll we'll make sure that there's links to it in the show notes and all that good stuff so people don't have to remember how to spell. Just go to jasonfalls.com and click over to see the articles where the show notes are and you can you can find that. Well, Laura, thank you again for being here and I just want to let you know if I get stuck in a Colombian jail in a couple of weeks, I'm calling you. Oh, please do. <laughs> At least I'll translate for you. <laughs> Not guilty. <laughs> Always great to get that new perspective, isn't it? Really appreciate Laura stopping by and sharing her wisdom with us. Go check her out and do go over to search for Coffee Number 5, wherever you get your podcast. She's got a great show, interview some really smart people, myself not included, I don't, I don't call myself smart. I'll let you all do that if you think I am. If you think I'm not, then that's fine too. But anyway, Coffee Number 5, go search for that show wherever you get your podcasts. Folks, real quick, the fall is fast approaching, and that means conference season. For the first time in a while, I'm going to be back out on the road speaking at some influencer marketing events and about influencer marketing at some other events, and I want you to join me. Probably the most relevant to talk about right now is Content Marketing World. That's coming up quickly, September 13th through the 16th in Cleveland, Ohio. I've spoken there before, but not for a few years, so I'm excited to get back. ContentMarketingWorld.com is the URL. If you use Falls 100, you get $100 off the ticket price. That's at ContentMarketingWorld.com. Super excited to be back in Cleveland to see all my friends there from the content marketing world. I am going to be talking about influencers, so I hope you can make it. I will see you there. You can always check the website at jasonfalls.com for more information about the events where I'm speaking. I normally include a call to action in the show notes and other articles there about all of that good scheduling stuff. In the meantime, please do help me spread the good word. Tell someone who might want to know more about influence marketing about this podcast. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We're on them all and certainly do appreciate that feedback. You can also help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using that recording. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners. The technical production is by podcasting360.com. Winfluence airs along the marketing podcast network. Thanks for listening, folks. Let's talk again soon on Winfluence. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com.
If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPM you might enjoy as well. I'm Gordon Glenister, and I'm the host of Influence, the global podcast that shines a spotlight on the influencer marketing industry. And each episode, we talk to brand managers, agency strategists, influencer platforms, industry thought leaders, and the influencers themselves about the latest trends and stories affecting the influencer marketing industry. And their stories will certainly inspire you. So just hop over to gordonglenister.com or search for Influencer.